Hi, my name is Robert Byrne from Deutsches Herz Zentrum in uh, Munich in Germany and I'm delighted to be here at Euro PCR 2015. We've had some very interesting discussions and data regarding peripheral interventions and with this in mind it's a real pleasure to be joined by three experts in peripheral interventions and I welcome Alberto Cremonese who's also a uh, course director, uh, Thomas Zeller uh, from uh, Germany and Antoine Soguet from Toulouse in France. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining us. Alberto, maybe I'll start with you. And uh, we have had some uh, recent data and developments regarding uh, carotid artery intervention. We've had some new stents and some new access techniques. Maybe I might ask you, first of all, to tell us about some of the new stent development data. Uh, well, we have to say today that there is really something new in uh, the skyline of carotid artery stenting. Why? First point is that we have a micro mesh technology for stenting. What does it mean? We have double layer mesh stent for improving the scaffolding during our procedure and for covering more plaques which can be really embologenic. For this reason, we think that with this kind of technology, we can reduce the, not only the procedural complication, but also the post-procedural complication, which counts for the two-thirds of the entire 30-day late embolic events. And what have we learned about these stents from recent studies? So actually, we do not have a lot of science uh, behind this kind of new technology. Uh, what uh, uh, we uh, are collecting now is uh, something related mostly to two stents. One is uh, the Sea Guard from uh, MGuard, and the other one is the Road Saver from Terumo. Now we are collecting data, and uh, we will show this data probably, in, I think, in uh, one year. And should we use these devices with embolic protection devices? Are they thought of as synergistic therapy or instead of embolic protection? For the time being, I think that we have to continue to protect the brain with mm -hmm. uh, 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 embolic devices. For the future, we will see. Probably we can reduce the use of embolic protection with this specific kind of stent in asymptomatic patients. Mm -hmm. So some interesting developments regarding new stent technology. What about new techniques for access to the carotids? Just today we have seen something very interesting in live cases uh, done uh, in Cotignola and done uh, in uh, Toulouse. Radial access. Radial access is very uh, part of the DNA of uh, interventional cardiologists. Through five French lung introducer, we can today do a very safe procedure, a very effective procedure. The only thing I have to outline is we need true five French uh, devices, means stent, otherwise is almost impossible. Okay, so this seems like a very feasible approach for treating the carotids, but we still need some development with regard to the stent technologies. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So Thomas, uh, maybe I'll ask you, I know that you have been involved a lot in uh, drug-coated balloon therapy uh, in the peripheral area, and I know also that uh, we have had some interesting data regarding superficial femoral artery uh, therapy and also below the knee therapy. Maybe I'll start by asking you to tell us what's new in superficial artery uh, uh, ter uh, territory. Well, there had been some data presented during the meeting by Dirk Scheinert from Leipzig. He uh, presented the subgroup analysis of the long lesion subset of the IMPACT Global Study, which is a study uh, kind of all commerce registry, including 1,500 patients treated with femoral popliteal disease with the IMPACT Admiral Balloon. And he presented the long lesion uh, subcohort analysis, which included a mean lesion length of more than 25 centimeters, basically. And the interesting outcome was that um, the lesions that had been treated with single drug eluting balloon angioplasty, so no provisional standing, turned out to have the same patency at one year as the ones that had been combined with standing. So on the first glance that would mean that standing does not 
add any additional benefit to the use of drug eluting balloons, but I can tell you, uh, based on our own experience, having enrolled a lot of those patients, that standing had to be performed, otherwise the acute success wouldn't have uh, been saved. So um, you cannot conclude that DB plus standing is as good as DB only. That's, that's a differential indication. And how do we better select the patients who need stenting? Of course, we're used to seeing a lot of dissection, particularly in the superficial femoral artery when we treat these patients. Is there some simple advice you can give to people to decide when they need to implant stents to ensure a good acute result? Well, basically, the main indication for standing after using drug eluting balloon is recall. I could mm -hmm. recall based on uh, calcification, either eccentric calcification or really long distance severe calcification. That's a clear indication mm -hmm. for supporting the vessel with a scaffold like a dedicated stent, like supera stent or something like that, in addition mm -hmm. to DEB. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, dissection, as long as not flow limiting, is not a clear indication for the use of stents. Mm -hmm. So I think some definitely promising data with drug-coated balloon uh, 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 technology in the SFA. What about below the knee? I know there has been some controversy with regard to drug-coated balloons in below the knee. Maybe you can update us on some recent uh, data on below the knee. Yeah, well, um, during the meeting, uh, Professor Broadman from Graz uh, did present the one-year data of the Biolex P2 study, which was a kind of pilot-driven study comparing the Paseo 18 Lux balloon in the use of uh, the treatment of BTK lesions as compared to plain balloon. This was a very small study, 72 patients enrolled, and I had to, the pleasure of being the PI, but Marianne Broadman enrolled the most patients, so she, she had the privilege to present the data. Um, it, well, it was a questionable privilege because this is, <laughs> in addition to Impact Deep, another study which turned out to be negative in terms of showing a clinical benefit of the use of drug eluting balloons. Uh, however, the, the good news from this study is that there was no signal towards more amputations uh, which came from the Impact Deep study. But basically, restenosis rate was comparable and there was no benefit in terms of clinical outcomes. But uh, on the other hand, it was safe. So Thomas, how do you think we move forward with drug-coated balloon therapy in below-the-knee territory? Well, definitely we need additional studies. Currently there's one uh, study ongoing, the Lutonix BTK study, using the Lutonix 14 drug eluting balloon compared to plain balloon angioplasty. We have clearly to wait for this study outcome because what I clearly believe is that there is not a real DZB a class effect. So there's a difference in, in coating technologies, there's a difference in, in uh, plastic material used uh, for the balloon, all affecting at least the outcome. This has been shown above the knee. So we have to wait for additional data to finally conclude whether drug eluting balloons work below the knee as good as above the knee. Yeah. I mean, BTK uh, lesions certainly a challenging uh, subset and these are patients who tend to have complex disease patterns. I know, uh, Antoine, you have experience in this area and maybe you could uh, share with us some insights into new techniques for recanalizing BTK, which we've been hearing about at this meeting. For sure. Thomas discussed the strategy and the uh, material we have to use the, after the passage of very long occlusion of BTK arteries, but sometimes when you have some problem and when it's impossible to recanalize the artery and to assess uh, the distal outflow of the arteries, we need another option. Mainly we go by an integrad access and we start to recanalize the artery at the beginning of the occlusion and try to get in the run of vessels and re-entry more distally into the vessel. If you failed for this antegrad access, you could go by retrograde access, but it's quite difficult to make some puncture in some patients. And a new technique was developed to try to assess a re-entry after a subantimal recanalization was to put the balloon in front of the re-entry site and to inject some iodic contrast to create some re-entry point some uh, subantimal recanalization to the true lumen.
Mm -hmm. And are there uh, particular specialized devices that we need in order to perform this uh, re-entry from the subintimal space? Or are these uh, techniques that the interventionist can use with standard equipment? Uh, yes, with very standard equipment because you could use the, some, some catheter to assess the injection of iodic contrast or you could use some balloon angioplasty with over-the-wire balloon and you inject some iodic contrast. It's easier, it's a simple uh, strategy and after when you create the re-entry point you could put your wire in the true lumen and to perform the angioplasty uh, for the, the, the next uh, step. I know working in the subintimal space is something that has been gaining increasing traction in the coronary area. What do you think are the next steps uh, that we need to take with this uh, technique in the peripheral area? It's not for the technique. The next step will be to ensure a good patency of this technique and probably we could discuss uh, the use of a uh, very long uh, uh, balloon with uh, long inflation and maybe, maybe, but uh, it's uh, uh, too early, uh, the use of uh, drug-coated balloon with uh, uh, some uh, modified technologies for the drug-coated balloon to be sure that the drug will be delivered uh, in the vessel wall. Well, I think some very interesting presentations, some very interesting data here, lots of discussions around peripheral intervention at uh, EuroPCR 2015. I think all that remains for me is to thank you, gentlemen, Alberto, Thomas and Antoine, for taking the time out to join us today. And I'd like to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in to watch. Thank you.